Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we've been going over some of the arguments for the existence of God. Now, this isn't all of the arguments for God's existence, but this is a good place to start. If you're willing to be open to the evidence for God, then at least one of these arguments will probably make sense to you. If not, then the problem is definitely not a lack of evidence. If, as I've outlined, these arguments work, then there's a cost for continuing in atheism, and that cost is not insignificant. Leaving out the arguments that I don't personally defend, as an atheist, you would need to accept the following. You'd need to accept that your senses have no proper function, and in fact, that nothing in the natural world does. You'd need to accept that there is no good, adequate explanation for the existence of the universe. You'd need to accept that there's no such thing as objective moral values, and therefore that no actions can be really good. Not even the most saintly of self-sacrifices for the benefit of others would really be a good action. You'd need to accept that there's no such thing as objective moral evil, and therefore that no actions can be really wrong. Not even the most savage and barbaric massacres of innocent people would really be wrong. You'd need to accept that in the end, human life is totally without any kind of real purpose or meaning, and that therefore no deed or accomplishment can be meaningful at all. You'd need to accept that the only kind of value that really exists is entirely subjective. Even human beings would have no real value aside from their usefulness to other human beings in a purely subjective sense. You'd need to embrace ignorance about the fine-tuning of the universe for intelligent life, simply accepting that there's no sufficient explanation for it. You'd need to claim that it's actually impossible for a maximally great being to exist. You'd need to accept that motion can begin without being caused by anything, in defiance of Newton's first law of motion. You'd need to reject the notion that there's any sort of causal order in existence, seriously endangering the claims on which the scientific method rests. You'd need to accept that things all exist by necessity, endangering science further. You'd need to accept that no action can be better or worse than any other action. Now, of course, you don't need to accept all of these things, and you don't need to refute these arguments. There are two other alternatives that I think are open to someone who doesn't yet believe in God. Alternative 1. Accept that you hold an irrational position with respect to the existence of God. Alternative 2. Become a theist. Next time, what really happens to souls when they die? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.